Hey everybody, I'm Lisa Young Sutton and today we're going to look at the Lenormand Coffin Card. The coffin is the card of endings, but more specifically, its traditional near meaning is that of painful endings, in injurious losses, and illnesses severe enough to put you in bed. It can indicate a loss of life, health, money, or fortitude. It may indicate ruin or crisis, powerlessness, depression, mourning, fear, dread, or low self-esteem. Essentially, it brings some type of an end or loss that's accompanied by bad feelings. So it's not just a happy ending. Along with the mountain and cross, it's one of the three stop cards in Lenormand, and stop cards indicate a lack of forward movement, expansion, or positive growth. So the mountain may temporarily stop you and the cross brings hardships that can stop you from doing what you want or it may ask you to stop and consider if you really need to carry a particular burden that's holding you back. But the coffin truly stops you either indefinitely or permanently. Yes, endings can be a good thing. They can be a blessing in disguise or a necessary part of moving forward in life or experiencing spiritual growth. So it's really what comes after the coffin, as we read left to right, that determines what we'll experience next. The coffin shows an end of something, not an end of everything. Uh, you can look at it as an ending to a particular phase of your life. So the core energy is most certainly negative. Um, it generally shows up and spreads to say that something will end, something may be buried, someone is feeling ill or depressed. Can it describe retirement? Well, yes, it can, um, because retirement is the end or the death of a job, right, or career. Uh, but keep in mind that this would infer a painful ending, um, especially if surrounded by other negative cards. But the, uh, the positive card for retirement is the lily. Now, when you see this card, consider words and phrases such as stop, end, painful end, injurious loss, sickness, crisis, mourning, depression, closed, finished, expired, empty, boxed up or boxed in, buried, terminal, termination, um, expired, I think I already said, reclusive or severely restricted. Uh, descriptive meanings include a box, a drawer, a waste paper basket or garbage can, an enclosed cupboard, uh, something that's buried, something that's underground, the basement. Uh, it may describe a funeral home or a graveyard ghosts, mediumship, a bed or a sick bed, a prison cell, a birth on a ship, or a funeral, um, if it's accompanied by like the garden and the cross. Now, if you are describing a person and it shows up physically, it may describe them as having dark features or even sickly looking with dark circles under their eyes, uh, maybe an exhausted appearance or they may just uh, dress in black or wear gothic attire. It may describe a grieving widow or widower. Now, personality traits include depressed, pessimistic, fatalistic, dark, gloomy, claustrophobic, or stuck in the past. Occupations can include archeologist, grave digger, coroner, funeral director, com uh, more commonly known as an undertaker, Growing up, my sisters and I were often called the undertaker's daughters. Or someone uh, from your past who's been long forgotten or which you metaphorically left for dead. It can show up um, to describe those things as well. Now, in a daily draw, it may tell you that something may end or expire today. Um, you may decide to cancel your obligations because you're just too tired, just not feeling up to up to it. Um, you might decide to stay in bed. Uh, you may just, you know, keep in mind this is a daily where we tone things down, right? So you might just have a, a headache or just not be feeling so great and you want to just lay low, you know? Um, or it may tell you that a contract will end, a friendship or a subscription 
or maybe the milk will expire. <laughs> um, I've already had dailies with the, uh, the coffin and the rider and um, the book that tell me I'll be receiving a box of Lenormand or Oracle cards in the mail. So those are some uh, ideas for your daily draws. Uh, in advice readings, the coffin may show up to tell you that it's the right time to end something. It's time to let go. It may tell you to finish what you start, box it up and put it in the basement, take a long rest, take time to grieve. It's over and it hurts, but you have to accept it. Stop suppressing your feelings. Don't be so pessimistic. Uh, it may suggest that you open yourself up to a higher perspective and stop being so closed-minded. All right, those are all possibilities for advice readings. In a work or business reading, um, well, think about painful losses and endings as they pertain to your job or, or business transactions. It may indicate business bankruptcy or the permanent end of a job that will bring financial crises or depression. Um, Descriptively, for a work reading, it may refer to a deadline or a dead-end job. In a spiritual reading, um, endings are often powerful indicators that something is, um, is about to end to, in order to allow something else to open up in your life. And sometimes people need something that knocks them off their feet to force them to change their ways or their views, right? Uh, and while the coffin isn't the card of rebirth, like the death card in tarot, in a spiritual reading, it can certainly indicate the need for a spiritual rebirth or awakening. It may indicate mediumship in a spiritual reading. Um, someone may be trying to contact you. Uh, you may be asked to connect with your ancestors or make peace with someone from your past or, or someone who has passed. Now, in a relationship reading, it can indicate a dead end union or the death of feelings, uh, but it also may refer to someone with uh, buried dark secrets such as skeletons in the closet um, or a final and painful divorce or ending of a relationship. Uh, in health readings, when it appears in a health reading, um, don't see it as death. See it as um, an indication of a chronic illness, depression, severe headache, pain, fatigue, exhaustion, terminal disorders, or with mental cards, claustrophobia, as I already mentioned, um, or any illness that forces you to go to bed, right? Now, looking at the cards on the table, we mostly just see coffins or caskets, as we call them in the biz, right? Um, some choose, I've seen, I've seen the, um, King Tut's tomb type thing, um, the Egyptian tomb image in, um, more than one deck. The Irish Lenormand, uh, shows a burial mound, um, the, <laughs> the kitsch, you know, I had to put this one in because, you know, what is that? Is that a motor home that someone converted into a hearse or is that someone who just, <laughs> refuses to leave a loved one behind on vacation. They're like, you know what? You just died. You are not going to ruin my vacation plans. You are coming with us. <laughs> I mean, that one just cracks me up. Uh, let's see. What do we have here? Okay. The uh, fairy tale fortune card says the coffin signals endings, loss, and change. And there you go. Um, I was, well, I will talk about that with the stork in a minute but endings certainly do bring change. So do losses. Okay. Um, and the, this is the red owl, I think, right? Yeah, this is the red owl verse card as herald of malaise or even decay. It's best. The coffin stays out of your way. Your courage and assets both drain away. All of this happens without any delay. <laughs> what a cheery poem. Thank you. That's great. Okay. Now, we can compare the coffin to a few cards that people find similar. So let's, uh, let's do that. This is the, what is this? This is Mathalima, Mathalima, Lenormand. Okay, so we can compare the uh, coffin to the cross for suffering and pain that we endure in life, but 
The cross isn't a card of endings, but enduring something difficult. It often accompanies the coffin in readings regarding suffering after a loss. So it's, it's often, um, the cross often shows up in readings about a loss or an end, but it, that's not its meaning, okay? We can compare it to the mountain for obstacles that temporarily stop you rather than the coffin's meaning of a dead end, okay? We can compare it to the mice uh, with regard to health, uh, the mice refers to diseases related to parasites, bacteria, or viruses, while the coffin is referring to any illness severe enough to knock you off your feet. There's another comparison between these um, that is of the, uh, the meaning of loss, right? So the mice is the card of gradual or piecemeal losses or losses that may be possibly recouped, while the coffin indicates complete losses, bankruptcy, or losses severe enough to end your current way of life. Okay, and um, here we go with the stork. Um, okay, regarding change, right? While endings are certainly changes, the stork is the card of change, right? That's its core function. It's the change card. And it's generally positive change unless it's accompanied by negative cards. Whereas the coffin is simply the card of endings or losses. That's its core function. So core function, endings and loss with the coffin. The stork, the core function is change whatever that's going to bring, okay? And then we can compare the coffin to the tree um, because the tree drains the energy out of other cards that it touches, especially the cards below it, right? Whereas the coffin drains the life out of other cards. Um, so it's more, it's a more severe drainage, <laughs> okay? All right, so let's uh, look at the plot. I'll get my book out for the plot. All right, so do I have this on? I still have it on the snake. Here we go. Oh, just turned right to it. All right, we got the Philippe Lenormand original translation for the coffin. The coffin. Very near to the person means, without any doubt, dangerous diseases, death, or a total loss of fortune. Ooh. That's the grand tableau, meaning when near. That's the traditional meaning. More distant from the person, the card is less dangerous. Well, isn't that just a cheery little <laughs> definition? Okay. Now, the original game instructions, the game of hope, right? The one who lands on the coffin is deemed to be dead until another player lands there or until they throw a double, okay? So that's what makes it a, uh, a stop card, okay? The coffee card verse. The coffin refers to death or a long and tedious illness when near, when far, it may refer to considerable inheritance. Now in Lenormand, the ship is the card of inheritance, but in order to see that, we need to see that there was a death in the family, which we would see with the coffin and lily cards. Okay, so very similar. Now what do the mod guidelines have to say? The method of distance. Well, I've already mentioned most of this. Um, as the card of endings and loss, you always want to see it far from your card in a grand tableau. When it refers to loss, it's a loss that leaves one with bad feelings and a sense of powerlessness. If close in a health reading, it indicates an illness severe enough to send you to bed. Now, even if the tree is far, this is important, in a grand tableau, even if the tree is far, if the coffin is very near, the loss that it brings may make you feel ill or even become ill, okay? Now, any card touching the coffin will be negatively affected by it. It's a powerful card, right? Like the sun is a powerful positive card, the coffin is a powerful negative card. Um, but the degree of which uh, will depend upon the card's position, right? How, how negative is it? Well, how near is it to your card? How near is it to life area cards? 
end. Is it above or below or left or right, which we're going to look at in a moment in an example. Okay. The directional cue for the coffin is that it's a stop card. So it ends whatever comes before it. The card following it in a horizontal line is also diminished a bit, right? Because you're kind of still left a little uh, depressed or shell-shocked or whatever from this ending or loss. Um, so you really want to see favorable cards following it. As far as clusters, it's part of the well-being and the C or financial cluster. Um, okay, so let's look at an example in a spread here. I'm going to show you a, a cross spread just to show you the, the differences, the positions of where it falls will make. Come to mama. There we go. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Okay, so example and a spread. All right, so the coffin, here we have it right, right here on the top. Let's first put it to the left, okay? So there, just to give you a visual. All right, so if it's to the left of the other cards, right, then you're starting with an ending. You're starting with some kind of a loss, right? But you're moving on to something else. And of course, you want to be moving on to positive things, right? Now, if the coffin is below other cards, uh, we could say that the other cards are rising above this illness or loss or end, but they're also in influencing it, right? Um, we can say that the coffin below is setting a dismal stage that these cards must rise above or are rising out of, or that the cards above are being built on a painful ending loss or illness. Okay, now when the coffin is to the right, we don't want to see that, do we? Because we, we read left to right, so that means everything before it is heading for a loss, an illness, or an end. If it's in the center, what can we say then about it? It's the, it's the heart of the reading, right? In the center, everything is describing it or revolving around a loss, an illness, or an ending. Now, if it's above, so if it's above the other cards, then the coffin is negatively influencing the cards below it. It's depressing them or draining the life out of them, All right? There you go. That is the coffin, my friends. So that's it for today, my fellow Lenormand addicts. <laughs> Next up will be the garden card, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.